Hello everyone, it's Bertie here, the Recycled Hippie Chick. Hey, I just wanted to come on. Um, I was watching a video with Beatrice Helton, and she was doing some uh, experimenting in a little book she had made, and I thought, well, I'm going to experiment also. So, I got my little envelope. I had grunged this up and coffee dyed it the other day. My friend... Arlene had made it to me quite some time ago and mailed it to me. It's just a bunch of envelopes taped together that she had made. And the other day I coffee dyed them, and so they've been drying because it's kind of a mess to try to coffee dye envelopes because they want to glue themselves back together. And anyway, I had it, it was a whole mess. Anyway, but I got it done, and it's dry, and I thought this would be the perfect little book to grab and practice what Beatrice was doing. So I thought, why not just turn on the video and, and video it while I do it? So I'm gonna do that. But first I wanted to show you what I've been making. Um, I was watching Shabby Soul and she was, I guess she, I just ran across her and it appears to me that she does like Tim Holtz. It looks like she works for Ranger Inc. And when they come out with a product, she makes something out of it to show you what kind of things you can do, okay? I don't buy Tim Holtz products because I can't afford that kind of stuff. So I use the free recycled stuff that I have, but I thought it was cool. So I thought, hey, I'm going to attempt to recreate my own, you know, see what he has done uh, commercially and try to do it on my own organically. So I did. Um, this is my inside signatures whenever I'm ready to use. But her cover was cloth. And uh, of course, she had different stuff on the inside. And I'm not done yet. I've just started. But I wanted to get my spine cardboard glued in so that when I was ready to put my signatures in, it was all ready and holes were punched. I had actually made my material too long, so I just simply folded it over and sewed it at the top of and the bottom so I'll have a little side pouch. So what I did was I took his material is, he has different materials that appear to have been stamped or stenciled or, or both on and it's you buy it like that so I thought why don't I just stamp and stencil and spray on my own material so I did I just stamped and stenciled and splattered and come up with my own graffiti looking material his is called the Electric Element Fabrics. And uh, I just come up with my own. She had made a little cluster on the front. So, of course, I came up with my own ideas. Made my own cluster. So, when you see somebody do something on a video and you think, Oh, I don't, I don't have digitals or I don't have a a kit or anything like that. Don't let that deter you. Study that video and see what you have in your art studio that you can come up with and make it yourself. So that's what I'm in the process of doing here. And I will probably watch that video 800 times on every little thing that I do to get ideas for inspiration. And it's funny because when you look at it, you think, oh, I'm going to be copying off of them. No, you aren't, because your stuff is completely different than theirs, and it all turns out completely different. So don't ever think what you're doing is going to be exactly like somebody else's. It won't be. It'll be yours. So there's that. I just wanted to go through these pages tonight and uh, just get some color on them. I want to use stuff I don't normally use. I want to use different mark-making things. 
and just get some color down. These are just almost done, so I might as well finish those off so I can throw the plastic away. I have some gelatos here that if I don't do something with, they're going to get hard and they're not going to be good anymore. So I'm going to try to use up some of my gelatos and I'm going to use up some of my, I'm going to use some of my mark making. <clears throat> some of my mark making things like this little thing. that I made out of a toilet paper roll and sponge that little kid's foam. So we'll just use all kinds of stuff that I have in here in my little boxo tricks and see what we can do. And I'm not even gonna pay attention to colors. I'm just gonna start grabbing stuff and putting it down and uh, because Beatrice she has got, where are my scrapey cards? Here they are. She goes back over this stuff and does so many layers and so many other things that some pages she completely goes over with collage and you never even see. But for those of us who have issues with the white space, this really helps. So I'm just going to go through and... Um, do some mark making. You might as well join me and get something that you can smoosh paper with also. And let's get busy. I think I'm going to put some of this on my table over here so I can get some on it and put it on my little roller thing. There we go. Give us some shapes. Hi, milkshake. Hi, milk. What have you guys been up to? It's been a while since I've been on. Feeling feeling a bit more human, so I thought I'd come on and see what everybody's doing. There we go. So much for that one. Now I should probably let these dry, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to keep going. I don't even know what this thing is, but uh, it works for mark making. Oh, come on. It works for mark making, but I'm not sure my black paint is working. Goodness sake. There we go. There we go. Well, I will tell you, it works better on the gel plate. You know, you go over your gel plate with the, uh, you go over your gel plate with your color and then you scrape this through it and it makes lines. There are some. It's making cool, cool shape over here on my painty paper backdrop. This is just going to be my experimental book. This is going to be my book that I just try 
new things on and try not to think about overthink stuff. And um, I'm not going to worry about messing it up. I'm going to just play and experiment with letting loose and letting go to layer. I'm Sometimes I have a hard time layering and going over stuff. And this is going to be my don't be afraid to layer book. Let's see, what else do we have in here? We have some bubble wrap. Paint is dry on that bubble wrap and it's crumbling off. Okay, let's see here. What else can we do? Let's do some gelatos. I don't know if you guys are familiar with gelatos. You probably are, but they're, they look like chapstick to me. And you can just scribble with them. You can smear them with your finger if you wish. Or you can go over them and they turn into water soluble, kind of like a watercolor. So they're really versatile to do all kinds of stuff with. And of course my water is extremely dirty. <laughs> So it's kind of, well, hey, it's adding the grunge factor, isn't it? Instant grunge. It's a little chips of it that I want to make sure we don't waste. I'm just grabbing them out here. I don't care if they match or not. I'm just putting some color down. What have you guys been doing? What's everybody been working on? I've been working in my fall journal, my happy mail journal. Tonight I have a stack. You know, you, you kind of come out here and you get an idea and you want to start something. So whatever's on your table, you just kind of sit aside and you start building this stack of stuff that's unfinished because you want to start something new and... I had a stack like that sitting on one of my uh, cubby shelves over here. And tonight I told myself I wasn't going to let myself work on anything until that stack had been done something with. So part of it is I, uh, I had started making some collage envelopes. And got off track and started doing something else. And they'd just been sitting there. So I went ahead and finished them. I did four of the collage envelopes. And went ahead and got them put away. And some of them were magazine pictures that I had been cutting out. And what I had done was I had watched a video. I don't know who it was. Because... My history is so full of stuff that it would take me forever to go back in my history and look for it because it's been a couple weeks ago. And 
whoever it was that I was watching was using these little, little bitty images like for focal points. I don't know if they were making clusters and putting a little image in them. I don't know what they were doing because they have sat over here in this pile for so long. When I said, oh, I'm going to harvest me some magazines, you know, and get some little tiny images. And then I went on to something else before I actually, you know, did the project. And now all I have are the little images in a pile. And I have no idea what I cut them out for. <laughs> so I just made a pie. I just made a file that said tiny images and put them in my file cabinet. And, uh. One day, if I ever think about it or run across it again, I will have that and I'll, I'll go back to it. Yeah, just little things like that I had that I had to do something with before it bothered my brain. So, you know, it looks like I'm just being a little kid and scribbling. And you know what? I am. And that's okay. Because if it brings you joy, then by golly, it's okay. I'm sure there's people flicking through YouTube that see these videos going, What the heck are these adults doing? Playing with doilies and paint, you know? We have had such a beautiful rain the past few days. Oh my goodness. Such a beautiful rain. It's from yesterday till today, we got four and a half inches in our rain gauge. So it has been wonderful. We have been in such a drought that I have had to literally water the things in my garden, my, my flower garden. Every single day, I have to move that sprinkler somewhere else. Because we just have had no rain. So, thank you, Lord, for the rain. Am I getting staying in screen? Okay. What else can we do? What else can we do? I know. Let's use our little... Let's use these pastels. I have some wax pastels somewhere. And I don't know where. They must be out in the camper in my travel pack. I guess really we're kind of making painty paper, aren't we? These are my chalky ones. And my other ones are waxy, which I like the waxy ones because these end up kind of, you know, powdering, smeary powdering, but that's okay. Whoops, whoops. Use it somehow. here. 
I have been watching a lot of videos and I've done a lot of slow stitch. I've been working on my granddaughter. She wanted a, she loves, she's six and she loves to um, slow stitch also. So she wanted me to make her a needle book like I have. When we go to ball games and stuff, she loves for me to bring my needle book and slow stitch and show her how to do stitches and embroidery and all that. So I made her her own little, well, I don't have it out here or I'd show it to you. I made her her own little needle book. So... I have Marco poloed her tonight and told her, and she's so excited. She wishes I didn't tell her because she wants to come right over and get it, and it's bedtime. <laughs> so she was excited about it. And then she met Marco poloed me back and said, Gigi, where did you get your artistic ability? <laughs> I said, I got it from my daddy. He loved to... Uh, take junk and make something out of it. My dad could MacGyver, like, you know, if he needed to fix something, he would fat and didn't have the parts. Instead of running to town to get the parts, he would fabricate it out of something he had in the, you know, steel pile or whatever. And then she said, where did you get your ability to draw? And I said, well, my daddy, because, uh, You know, not too long ago, she spent the night with me and showed me how to make a, well, one of these. I don't know. Do you call it a cube? I call it a box. She showed me how to make one of those. And I told her, you remember that box you showed me how to make? Well, my daddy was actually the first one that showed me how to do that. He showed me how to draw a box... And he showed me how to draw a cylinder. And um, I told her when he was on the phone with the parts store or if he was in his truck waiting on the junkyard to open or, you know, something like that, he had a note tablet in his truck or we always had paper and pen laying on the kitchen table and he would sit there and doodle while he was wait, you know, waiting for somebody to help him on the phone. Or if he was early for an appointment, he'd sit in his truck and doodle. And so I told her that's where I got my, you know, ability. I would sit and doodle with him because my mom worked uh, nights a lot. So it was me and my dad all the time. So I went with him wherever he was. I was with him. And so if dad doodled, I doodled. And then it got to where, you know, in school, instead of doing my studies, I would sit and doodle on my notebook. So that's it was kind of fun to think back on that memory of where I got that ability because it was fun thinking back about my dad. So I thought to myself, I should probably write that little story down, although I have just documented it here on my YouTube channel. And I should write that down on a tag or something and put it in my art journal so, you know, one day my kids will look back and see where I got my ability. Um, Rosie may remember me telling her tonight, and she may not. So, I may remember to write it down, and I may not. <laughs> I may be thinking about it right now, but by the time I'm done, it may be far from my mind. You know, I'm not getting good color with that dirty water. So I guess one of our experiments we should learn here is 
when working with watercolor, it's best to have clean water, right? That is what I'm learning. Because no matter what color I work up, it seems to, they're all just looking like bleh. Let's see if we can get enough. Let's just pitch those. Those are done. Those can be done. Let's get out some regular. Let's do some credit card smushing. One thing that Beatrice said was, sometimes it's good to repeat on each page. You know, you may do one color. We'll do that on two or three pages throughout your book because it kind of brings it all together. And I never really thought about that. I usually just go so much by the seat of my pants. I don't even match colors on a page. I just, I just go. And I like to just go because sometimes I look back and go, oh my gosh, that color combination is so cool. But it was a happy accident. We're definitely getting some marks down. Make it much easier the next one. I will continue watching her little videos. I think there was six or eight of them. And uh, and I'll just continue on to do what she does on each one of her pages. I'll just do them on my pages. Hers were already done. That first episode, she had already had her colors down and she was starting to already create on her pages. So I'm a little behind. I have not gotten my color down. Well, I do now, don't I? Thank you, Arlene, for this book. I am going to enjoy it. I don't want to, that's got green, that's got green. Okay, I think my green is done. Move on to something else. How about some purple? How about, let's do some lines. I'm trying to get as much of that paint off of that as I can so that it dries faster because it's going to stick. Although it would be cool to smush it and make some of those lines appear, but we don't want it to stick. My um, glue on my envelopes is... activating with the wet paint and it's wanting to stick also I just smushed that over there in my paint it's okay it'll be pretty am I out of I gotta make sure I stay in here Okay, 
Let's see here. Big blob right there. Okay, now what? Oh, I know what I want to use. I stole something from Walmart. I'm going to go ahead and confess to you. I am a shoplifter. Their toilet paper was empty and somebody had set the roll up on top of the toilet paper machine and I thought, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness, I could use this. So I stuck it in my purse and brought it home. So yes, I am a shoplifter. And look, it was worth it. I love it. Now I want to do some other, I want to do some other sizes. I get carried away with the circles. They're fun. I'm just going to use my paint up here. Okay, now. Okay, let's see here. Here's my flip-flop. I have an old flip-flop I found. And I cut up. And I love the texture that it makes. This is the heel of a flip-flop. So let's see what color we can use. All right, Let's spread that out a little bit. Isn't it cool? Love that pattern. Hi, Pepper. I see you down there. Oh, I think I've used all my paint. Okay, now. I think that should get us started. I have to stand it up and let it dry. Need something else up here. What can we do? What can we do? Okay.
Now, I'll have to stand this up or blow dry it, but I'll bring you back after I watch some more Beatrice. And uh, we'll see what she does next and see what we can recreate. Thanks for hanging with me. Bye. Okay, I wanted to share. This is in my rock garden area. I had a volunteer muskmelon come up. I'm about to pick it today and cut the vine down. This whole vine produced one muskmelon. Just volunteer. It's ready. I'm going to pick it. So I thought I would document. I have another one that came up over here. It has two muskmelons on it. They're not ready yet. I just thought I would share. Where they come up, I let them grow. And enjoy what they give me.